Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and I'm very excited today to be checking out Root, a game of woodland might and right. This is the digital adaption of the tabletop game that we all know. And in this video, the focus is going to be to go over a couple tutorials with you to give you an idea of how this game looks, how it plays, how it feels. We're not going to go over every tutorial. As you can see here, by selecting tutorial, you've got a bunch to go through. The last three are the ones we won't be covering in this video, and that's because they're specific to each of the other factions. The main faction, the Marquis, is what we're going to be using from the beginning. And we'll be using this to learn the basics of Root and then to learn about the faction itself. And this is what's really cool about these tutorial series with the digital adaption is you're essentially learning the actual tabletop version of the game as well. So there's a bonus in that playing the digital game can help you learn the tabletop version as well. So we're going to go ahead to the top one here. We'll do this as soon as we do, we get a check mark and we'll be able to unlock the rest of the tutorials as we go down. So let's learn the basics. Welcome to Root, an asymmetric game of warfare and adventure where four unique factions struggle for control over the vast woodlands. In this scenario, you will play as the ambitious Marquis de Cat. Long before they became military and industrial powerhouse they are today, the Marquis came to the forest with a small band of warriors and a few modest buildings. I hear the flapping of wings in the distance. Move quickly to establish your hold on the forest before your feathery foes, the Airy, arrive. Move a warrior into a neighboring clearing to expand your rule. So we can go ahead down here in the bottom right. You got a march action to march. So we'll click on this. We'll select our warrior to move. And in this tutorial, it's focusing our attention right here, telling us to put it here. We could normally playing root when we have actual options to move to any clearing surrounding us. Uh, so in this case, we'll go here. You can see one of our creatures does actually move there. Each clearing has a suit represented, uh, representing the community of creatures living there. So this is the suit for this one here. When you have more buildings and warriors in a clearing than your enemies, you rule it. When you use the march action, you get to make two moves, so we can make another move now. So I could go ahead and move into here or here, but the tutorial is telling me to place it here, so I'll do that. Let's end our turn and rest. We have a big day ahead, or at least a big day of building ahead. So we'll go ahead down to the bottom right here. It says continue to evening. This is another really cool thing about the digital version is uh, the actual changing of the daytime as it goes along, night and morning and all that good stuff. Your sawmills generate one wood at the start of your turn. Wood is used to create buildings. You can see right down here, the wood tokens show up here and your supply in total is down here. So everywhere you have a clearing, it happens to have uh, one of these sawmills in it. And again, this is something else kind of that's kind of cool. You can actually click on some of the uh, things in this game and they'll actually react to you like this uh, creature here, this warrior will bounce around like a puppet, <laughs> uh, but they all do different things, which is kind of funny. All right. Let's build a recruiter to get more warriors into the forest. Select the build button. So build button right here and we can choose which clearing we want to build it in. I've got a recruiter here already, so I'm going to build one over here where I don't have one. And there it is right there. Cost one sawmill right here produces wood each turn to help build more buildings. But we want this one based on the tutorial. So we'll place that there. And as you can see, we just got ourselves a victory point. And that shows up over here. First player to 30 normally wins. Use the recruit action to place a warrior at each of your recruiter buildings. So we'll recruit right now. When we recruit, we immediately get those warriors at the buildings or at the, yeah, the buildings that we have a recruiter sitting. We can spread out our warriors to rule more clearings, of course, so we can do more movement actions. So I could say, let's take this and move him here, for instance, and we'll take this other individual and move down here. And just like that, we've finished. As I feared, an airy warrior has seized a nearby clearing. They aren't friendly to outsiders. Now, I do apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Uh, there's a couple different ways I feel like I could pronounce that one. After three actions, the day has finished for the mighty Marquis. Comes back to my turn. Choose an action. Okay, so I've got three actions right now, and you can see my goals are over here for the tutorial. March your warriors, in, warriors into the clearing occupied by the uh, Airy to challenge them. So 
Where are they? They're way down here. So if I want to challenge them, I've got to march them in. So what I'm going to do is take this one here and move them in. It should allow me to do another movement, which I will, and bring both of them in to increase my odds at this battle. Our warriors will surely triumph over these vile birds. It's like battle to fight them off. Let's do it. Click battle, click on the individual that you want to attack, and there we go. So we go into a battle, we've got two versus one. We're going to be rolling dice, and we have the advantage, as it mentions right here. So in battle, two dice are rolled with sides zero to three to determine hits. The attacker has the advantage. They take the higher die, leaving the defender with the lower one. So the advantage means whichever the die gets rolled, I get the better of the two results. So it's pretty powerful to have that advantage. Each player can deal no more hits than the number of warriors they have in the clearing uh, if the battle. So I have two of my uh, cats here, so I can get no higher than two hits off these dice. And look at that, I actually did. For each hit, an enemy piece is removed from the map, starting with the warriors, your total hits are added up and displayed below. So I got that, and there was only one of them anyway, so well taken care of. All right, so we're supposed to be defeating all of the warriors, which we just did, and we got to rule five clearings. So that's our next objective. So I could just simply go ahead and do a move action just to bring... There we go. And that will give me my fifth clearing. And just like that, the goal has been done. Now we have a roost showing up. So they've built a roost uh, that can recruit more of their warriors. You must attack and destroy it before their flock becomes too strong. Okay. So I can select another individual to move. I'll move this one maybe up here. And that's the end of my actions. As you can see down here, there was a sun with a number beside it. That tells you how many actions you have left. You'll see that again when it comes back around to the regular daytime. So there we go, three actions, right? So I can choose to bring, for instance, I could go, let's move uh, this guy here. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move this here. And we're gonna go full up with an attack and we're gonna attack this roost right here. So three of my cats are going in against a defenseless roost. Try and take it down. Shouldn't be a problem, I don't think. Your enemy's defenseless since they have no warriors to protect them. This means you get to deal an extra hit. Extra hits are not limited by the number of warriors in the clearing of a battle, or in the clearing of battle. So a single warrior could deal multiple hits. We're up to four. So that, uh, that roost is on fire. That thing you can consider done. We've wrecked house and this clearing is now ours. Well done, you've destroyed the roost. The fortress is ours for now, or the forest, I should say, is ours for now. Tutorial complete. So as simple as that, that is the basics of Root. And that really is the basics. Um, and so that's gonna complete the first tutorial. You'll see here we got a check mark. It opens up or unlocks the second one, which we are gonna check out in this video. And then we're, you know, the rest of these, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to learn specifics on the different ones, for instance, the faction we just played against, you can learn to play them here. And then of course you can jump back in here. Once you know what you're doing, you can go into local play. You've got challenges in here that you can try to go after, which is pretty cool. Faction selection here, the difficulty levels. You've got solo play where you can check your AI difficulty, whether you want it to be easy, medium, hard, random clearing suits. You can pick who you're going up against and all that good stuff. You got pass and play functionality in here as well. And then of course, online play. Let's go back to the tutorial though. We'll do the long war for the forest, learn to play. Here we go. Let's give us a little bit more of an in-depth look at how the full, uh, you know, gameplay of Root really works out. Uh, the invading Marquise de Cat wishes to exploit the woodland using its vast resources to fuel her economic and military machine. She scores victory points by constructing buildings in the woodland. In a typical game for the first player, uh, or the first player to score 30 victory points wins. This scenario, let's see if you can get to 12. So we're not going for a full 30 like I mentioned before down here, uh, but in this case, just 12. When you start a game as the cat, you keep, uh, you place your keep in one of the corner clearings, which are indicated right here. The keep is the cornerstone of your kingdom. Enemies may not build or place pieces in the clearing with your keep, but they can move there. Place your keep now. So it's saying I gotta place it here, so I'm gonna place it there. 
Marquis's army greatly outnumbers the other factions. You start with a warrior in every clearing except the one in the opposite corner of your keep. That clearing is uh, the airy territory. Or territory. So that's pretty crazy. We get uh, individuals are going to pop up in every single location here, all over the place. Finally, you must place one of each building in the clearing with your keep or any adjacent ones. So this tutorial, I believe, is going to go ahead and place a different type of building in different clearings as it sees fit. And they have swooped in and built a roost in the empty clearing. It's quite well defended. So you can see six of them down there. That's pretty well defended indeed. At the start of daylight, you have an opportunity to craft cards from your hand using workshops. You may review the text of cards in your hand by holding your mouse over them. Review the arms trader now. So I'll go like this. Simply pops up. And you can see here the arms trader card has the suit showing right here and the crafting cost right below it as well. Each workshop contributes its clearing suit towards paying crafting costs. For example, you could craft this arms trader if you had two workshops in that particular icon's clearings. You can craft Smuggler's Trail since you have a workshop in this clearing and it costs one of them. So you can see this is the type and it matches this. The cost that's right in there, it matches on the board. So we can create that right there as a match. There we go, one victory point for us going up. Crafting the Smuggler's Trail reward you with a victory point. You are on your way to 12. Perfect, I like to hear. After crafting, the Marquise can take three actions. All right, so this is where we gotta make some decisions here. And we also get VP when we build buildings. So let's do that. Uh, you can only place buildings and clearings you rule with available building slots. At the beginning, that's that's a lot. I mean, you've got all kinds of options here. It is telling us for this tutorial to place it here, so we'll do that. What building are we gonna build? Well, it's highlighting the workshop to start us off. It's gonna go through each of these. Will allow you to craft cards in your hand. So that's what the workshop's all about. It's going to give you two victory points. It costs one wood, which we have. The sawmill produces wood to help you build more buildings. More wood is always good that way. And then recruiters, as you know, help you recruit warriors. Let's build a recruiter to bolster our defenses. So let's continue past this. We'll select the recruiter, and that's exactly what we're going to build right here. Another victory point for us. Now that there are two recruiter buildings, you can recruit two warriors with a single recruit action. This is what's really cool is the recruit actions can allow me to spit out uh, multiple individuals from the different recruitment spots. So the more of those I create, the more warriors I have coming out into the board, which is pretty crazy. So there's one, there's two. I can move my warriors to the front lines to defend against the enemy, which I definitely want to do. So take a look here so the enemy's down here and if i want to bring these guys say for instance to bulk up this area right here you can just bring them down we can move any number of them by just using this we can you know select exactly how many of these guys we want to bring down here i want all two of them so i'm going to march both of them down here in the prior tutorial it made it look like only one could move in a group but you can definitely have more than one move so remember, when you choose to march, you may take you may make two moves. Use the second move to keep closing in on the Aries. So we are going to go ahead and do the exact same thing and just bring more of them down this way. Perfect. You can see the rule flags here. To move, you must rule either the clearing you are moving from or two. This can make it tricky to move deep into enemy territory without a substantial army. During evening, you draw one card. You can draw additional cards by having more recruiters on the map. Let's review the phases of your turn. So this is where you're gonna see the actual board here. Um, and if you go into here, you can see the different phases of our turn order, which we're gonna go through in this tutorial. So the bird song, place one wood at each sawmill I've created. Daylight is the first thing you do is craft. Second thing you do is take up the three actions, which can comprise of these, battle, marching, recruiting, building, and overworking. Evening, draw a card and plus one card for each earned on the recruiter track, then discard down to five cards. So that's pretty much the turn order for the cat. And again, every faction in the game is different, so it's going to be different every single time you play. Uh, if you're using different factions, that is, because they behave completely differently. 
All right, so the Marquise de Cat is an upstart. The lineage of the Airy dynasties will surely retake the forest. So they're doing this. See, and this is where they're very different. They're using decrees, which is even mentioned right here. They're assigning actions to their decree. Each faction has unique capabilities and their own way of taking actions, which I just mentioned. <laughs> so that's perfect timing. Uh, they may not look like much yet, this enemy we're trying to take down, but their ever-growing decree will allow them to take more and more actions each turn so long as their leader stays in power. So they're trying to keep their leader in power as long as possible. Um, we'll see if that pans out. They're bringing three of their individuals up here. They found the weak link, link in our defense. Prepare to fight. So they're coming up here to cause us grief. Right out of the gates. I don't like that. Let's see if we can handle them swiftly. Unlikely, but we'll try. So rolling off. They got the advantage. They got the two. And that is going to be enough to take me down. I did take one of them down with me, so that's good. Wasn't a complete, uh, complete wash for me. But they wiped that out pretty quick. They also happen to go ahead and build a roost, which is inconvenient. I do not like that. Uh, we may have lost the fight, but as long as your keep still stands, we can heal fallen warriors with field hospitals. Discard a card that matches the suit of the clearing where your warriors were defeated, so return them to your keep. So basically, this is the suit, this mouse look right here, and you can see I've got the favor of the mice. So I'm going to go ahead and discard this card, and that immediately allows me to heal those soldiers by having them come out of my keep into this location. You can see I got two guys there now. You can review special abilities unique to your faction, like field hospitals, by tapping on your avatar. So if we want to see the field abilities, uh, or the abilities for these, field hospital, I should say, is right here. When a warrior dies, you may spend a matching card to return them to your keeps. So as a good reminder, the keep itself, only you can place pieces in the clearing with the keep token. All right. So we're going ahead and getting some wood. Don't retaliate just yet. Build two more buildings to keep gaining VP. All right, I can do that. So no cards to craft. Press the continue button. Build into the building of your choice. Okay, so let's build into the building. Where do we want to drop it? I want to get some recruiters real close to them so I can, you know, continue to pump out some, some pain their way. So let's go ahead. Oh, actually, the recruitment option is not an option. We need more wood. So if that's the case, let's get a sawmill going in here. And while we're at it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be... Uh, since we could use more wood for building, let's use overwork to push the sawmill to produce more. So overwork is an action. Spend a card to place a wood at a clearing with a sawmill matching the card. Uh, so that works. Yeah, that would work, actually. i discard this one here. We'll overwork this one, I think. There we go. So we got some wood. So now we have enough wood to build on something else. So I'll build a second building. And I'll put that there as well. And we'll do a workshop there. There we go. Two VP. So we're really going up in the VP quite quickly. Tap your avatar for more building information. So you want to learn more about these buildings. You can see right here, as you build more of a particular building type, its cost increases along with the VP it's going to earn you. So that's really, really key. As you're going up this track, you can earn some big time v uh, VP points uh, by just building more and more of these. All right, you are out of actions by discarding this card right here. You can take an extra action. So I'm gonna do that. I'm going to use this Hawks for Hire. So spend one bird card for one additional action. We'll discard that one. Looks like you haven't recruited yet this turn. Let's do so with your final action. Yes, let's do it. So more warriors coming out for the cause. Try and take down some um, some Roos. We just acquired an ambush card. I like that. To start a battle, defender may play to deal two immediate hits. I like it. More warriors arrive each day. The area will use them to crush your pitiful forces. Ha, <laughs> you think they will. I will put up a fight. Okay, here we go. They're coming right in, and they're coming in with a lot of them. All right, so they're trying to cause me some grief, that's for sure. They got the advantage. The birds have fallen, fallen into a trap. You have the ambush card. Yes, I do. Remember, I just read that. You can use it to destroy two of the attackers here. I will happily do that. So this ambush card I just got in my hand here. Says at the start of battle, I can deal two immediate hits. I will certainly use that. It's nice. And ambush, these cats are more clever than I thought. 
So two hits immediately to them. Two of them are already down. And they do two to us. So I'm still standing, surprisingly. I thought I actually uh, would get wiped out there, but I didn't. I managed to survive. Their leader was deposed. Could not build in a clearing, so they lost a VP. So that is right there an example of how the leadership of this particular faction changes and is not exactly the most desired outcome for that faction. And you'll learn more about that by doing the tutorial for that faction, as it'll teach you. Continue scoring points to defeat the area by destroying roofs, constructing buildings, and crafting items that reward VP or reward VP. Yeah, essentially that makes sense. So here's all the wood coming in from my sawmills. This is going to give me an opportunity to build. Don't have anything I can craft. So right now I'm just going to deal with the fact I got three of these guys in my space. I don't like this. I don't like this one bit. So I need to get over there. Now I could get these three to come over here and deal with this roost and take it out. Um, I could also recruit one. So what I'll do is I'm going to recruit this time. I want to bolster my... Oh, this could work out really good actually. So I, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring these guys down here. I'm going to bring both of them. This is really going to swing the, the situation down here. I'll go like this instead. I was thinking of doing something south of here, but just getting the numbers all here is nice. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack them back. But now that I've got the, uh, the advantage and I've got the numbers, should do pretty good here. Hold Nice, that's a solid hit. Solid hit. Took all three of them down. They were no match for the cats. So they are out of here. That clearing is completely free of any airy individuals. Got myself a new card. Command Warren at the start of daylight may initiate a battle. Oh, they're going after... Oh, it's a one-on-one -on -one battle. This is interesting. I think I'm in trouble either way because even if I get a good roll, they would take it from me from the because they have the advantage. If you roll the number that was higher than the amount of warriors you have in this clearing, that means the hits you earn for your die roll were reduced to your number of warriors here. So yeah, I got it too, but it, it got reduced, unfortunately. The commander even added in an extra hit for me, so I was doubly in pain. But at the end, both of them were taken out, so that is going to be one empty clearing. Not so bad. I'm okay with that. Get some, they get some victory points for that. Not as much as me, though. I've got five. Okay, nothing to craft there. Choose an action. Good question. So it does say at the start of daylight may initiate a battle. As of right now, I have nothing. Nobody's in a spot to initiate a battle, so that's not going to work for me. Um, I could recruit again. Could also build a building. Um... There's only two individuals over here and only one right here. So I feel like I should just move in and start attacking them. So let's do it. Let's take this one here and head in. Bring all three. And then let's have these guys go in here. We'll move all three. We're going to make a little push here and see if we can pull this off. And we'll do our first uh, fight action right here. And if I'm lucky, I might be able to take down the roost as well. I hope the hits are in my favor here. Oh yeah. Excellent. Your advantage as the attacker let you take the higher dive from the right. Yes, indeed. That is enough. You score one victory point for each enemy building and token remove. Removing warriors doesn't score VP. So anytime I kill the warrior, I don't get VP. But because the roost is going down and is on fire now, I'm going to get some VP, which is what I'm kind of going after here because I'm looking for 12 total. So we'll see that change up here. Eventually, there you go, six. Nice work, taking down the roost, keeping, or keep attacking roost and placing buildings to reach your VP goal. Nice, okay. So, what is this, discard a matching card? Oh, I can return the warriors to my keep. Let's do that. I think, because I don't really have any plans to use this card anytime soon. So the field hospital will activate, giving me some soldiers over there. Uh, last action I do is I'm going to try to attack this one and see how it goes. I don't know if I'll be able to be as successful as the last one. There's more. Uh, it's... I got the advantage. Can I get... Oh! That's pretty awesome. I did not expect to survive that. That's pretty cool. Sweet. That worked out perfectly. Another ruse down. It's another point of VP going up for me. So now... Now... 
I can definitely start building some buildings here. Hey, what's going on here? You can see why. Oh, look at that. So you are inside of my area here. And I, I do not appreciate that. Uh, what is this? Gently use knapsack. Let's go ahead and use it. Perfect. Gives me a VP. I'll take that. All right, so what can we do here? What can we do? We can build some buildings, that's for sure. So let's go ahead. I got lots and lots. Uh, I kind of want to... I can't build it here anymore, uh, but I could build it here. And let's go ahead and build a recruiter. Two VP for that build. Uh, let's do another build. And let's grab another recruiter. See the VP going up, though? Because remember earlier when we were talking about these guys, the higher you go up with these things, the more VP you get, which is pretty sweet. So I'm going to do another recruiter. And that is going to be one successful tutorial completed. Or I should say two in this case. So that is all we needed to do to complete the tutorial was just get up to that 12 VP. And we definitely gave the Aerie a run for their money. But you can see here, if you want to learn about how they actually work, you can get into all these other tutorials. They're now all unlocked, so you can check out any of them. Um, I'm really looking forward to diving into this more deeply as time goes on. But what I really wanted to show you as part of this video is just kind of the feel, the flow of the game and how it looks. And I really think they took the artwork from the game that we all know and love and really convert it to a digital adaption that really does it justice looks wise for sure. And the flow of the game is really good. There was a couple times where I hit the OK button, I think twice, where it didn't actually, you know, put, progress anything and I had to hit it a second time. That's really the only thing I've noticed that's been a, uh, you know, uh, something that's kind of a bug, essentially, in this early access uh, within the tutorials. So, so far, so good. Pretty happy with what I'm seeing here. Um, but that is going to do it. So I really hope this is helpful in you making an informed decision on whether or not this is something you want to dive into. If you've never played Root Solo before, this could be a perfect way to get a handle on the game in a digital form to know whether or not you want to grab the tabletop version or to even just get your head more so around the rules. Now, I can't say specifically whether it will give you everything you need to know but it certainly can break down the barrier to learning the game, which is always a plus. So thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo.